What is orange, Japanese, and rhymes with Andy Murray? Tofu katsu curry. Ooh, 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 ooh. So that's called the katsu curry dance. Katsu curry is very popular in Japan. It's like a traditional Indian curry. Maybe a bit less complex when it comes to spices, they keep it quite simple. And it's categorized by its sweet, almost ketchupy, saucy consistency. I made this curry two years ago, and ever since then it's been my favorite curry to go back to because it's so simple to make and it's super, super tasty. So oh, let's get started. First, for our curry, we're gonna get the, the main part of the curry on, which is a vegetable base. So we need to prep the vegetables for that. It's so important when cooking for any dish that you use onions that you caramelize the onions nicely for at least five minutes, ideally 10 minutes. An Indian chef once told me that the most important step in cooking a curry is caramelizing the onions and then directly straight after caramelizing the spices to bring out the fullness of the flavor. So now it's time to go in with the ginger and the garlic paste. And then we're gonna cook that out for about two or three minutes on a low heat. Two minutes later, we'll go in with the curry powder and the garam masala. We want to cook this down for about three minutes on a low to medium heat. Add a little bit more oil if you want to aid with the caramelization of the onions. Next, we're going to go in with the tomato paste and we're going to cook that down for another three minutes. So it's nice and caramel. Putting some vinegar in here deglazes the pan and unsticks all of that caramel that's got stuck to the bottom. This might seem like a lot of veggie stock that we're adding, but the vegetables are going to soak up a lot of the liquid. And also, as you can see, we're putting a little bit of flour, which is again is going to thicken up the sauce nicely. Typically this dish has a crispy piece of animal protein on top, but instead, as you guys may know, I don't use animal products, so we're going to be using tofu today as our crispy topping. So we're going to be coating tofu in panko breadcrumbs, which are extremely light, airy breadcrumbs, which leads to a sweeter effect and a more crispy texture. Here I've got my pané station in uh, Kitchen terms, this is called pane, and that's a French word which means to, to coat in breadcrumbs. In English we would say breadcrumbs, in French they say pane. So we've got our panko breadcrumbs, as we said, Japanese breadcrumbs, some flour, our plant milk, and our tofu, organic tofu. That's important. With a traditional pane, they would use eggs. Instead of eggs, we're going to use some plant milk, and what we're going to do, we're going to add a little bit of flour maybe one tablespoon of flour into the plant milk to make it a little bit thicker. That way it will be sticky and it will mimic the stickiness of eggs. So, 
quickly goes into the flower, giving it a generous coating. Then I'm going to go into our egg mix, our egg replacement mix, shall I say. And then into the panko breadcrumbs. If you want to make them extra crispy, you can do the process again. As you can see, we want it extra crispy. So from the flour into the plant milk mix and into the breadcrumbs. The curry is two or three minutes away from finishing. It's already tasting really nice and it's smelling great. But we're going to add some extra flavoring by dropping some umami bombs in there. So we're going to use some miso. This is my own personal miso, which I'm very proud of. Some organic uh, salsa tamari, which is a gluten-free soy sauce. A little bit sweeter than soy sauce. And a little bit of palm sugar, which is a nice unrefined sugar. So it's going to be a balance of umami and sweetness. Half an hour later you can see that the sauce has thickened up nicely. This is the perfect time to go in with the zucchini because they cook very fast and obviously our umami bomb mix. Five minutes later, it should look something like this. So to cook basmati rice, we want to add one part rice and one part water. Put the lid on and bring it up to the boil. When it starts to boil, you can put the heat down a little bit and cook it until there's no water left. curry ready it's looking amazing we cooked the rice to perfection and we've got our crispy katsu tofu so baking time I added a little bit of chili sauce halfway through, sneakily, and it's really giving it a lovely kick. The sauce is very rich, the sauce is sweet from the, from the carrots, the caramels, onions, and the palm sugar. So it's a very strong kick of umami. You can really taste the miso and the tamari. And it's just one of those plates that makes you want to go back and have more. Also, the crispiness of the tofu, in contrast with the rice and the curry, no worse. You can also make this curry without having the crispy tofu but it really, really adds a lot to the flavour and the texture, the overall symphony of a dish. Thank you so much for joining me for this recipe. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you make this at home. If you do do this recipe, then let me know how you get on in the comments. And if you love this video, then subscribe to my channel. 
Thank you so much and I'll see you for the next one.